um zach i'm ready to end off the show with my favorite segment of all time we like to call it a take for 99 where we give you a take for a cheap price and it could be in any sport it could be a topic we already discussed but we want to go and dive into further detail or it could be something that we haven't discussed already on the show and zach i would love to do the honors here and i would love to go to the nba to end off here and i want to take a page out of your book i want to go and expand on a topic that we already discussed but in another light now obviously we talked about steph curry and we talked about the warriors and obviously if i could play the clip from last night that shot i mean we didn't really talk about that shot at all during the conversation but man i mean you look at this right here and steph curry shoots that cold blooded three-point shot put them to bed showed a lot of emotion you know in that sequence right there but with that being said despite all that despite steph curry being the best player of not all time but one of the best players of all time let me make sure I'm, I'm not misspeaking here okay michael jordan fans and lebron james fans top 10 of all time right with that being said steph curry has inadvertently ruined the nba and it's up to adam silver to fix it okay the reason why i like the take that i'm about to give from the top of my head is because it gives you three things it acknowledges the problem it gives you a reaction and i'm going to give you a solution so problem reaction solution right now once more we cannot ignore steph curry's contributions to the game okay he has given us everlasting memories like last night okay but let's take a deep dive around the league real quick chet holmgren is out for two months paulo ben carroll is out for months Zion Williamson, sideline indefinitely. Ja Morant, week to week. Kevin Durant, to miss a couple weeks. Tyrese Maxey, a couple weeks. Joel Embiid, just made his season debut last night and may not play back-to-backs. Okay? He's not. Him, him and Paul George, both out tonight. Him and Paul George, both out tonight at the time we are recording this video. Anthony Simons left the game because of shortness of breath. Okay? Let me catch my breath talking about this, right? Now, what that tells me is that player unavailability is at an all-time high in the NBA. Now, how do these injuries correlate back to Steph Curry in the overall premise of my take? Hear me out. Don't we find it strange that in today's modern era with modern medicine that we have players getting injured more? Okay, Michael Jordan played nine seasons of 82 games. Carl Malone played 10 seasons of 82 games. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played five seasons of 82 games. Just to name a few guys, right? A few stars, all-time greats, right? Now, I've seen many people come up with their theory on why in the era of modern medicine that players are getting injured more and playing less. But here's my theory. The three-point revolution created by steph curry okay has ruined the sport of basketball because it forces defenders to cover more ground okay to make sure they close on the three-point line while protecting the rim okay it's taking a physical toll on their bodies everybody want to play five out they want to drop to the paint they want to dish it back out for the three and as a defender you have to cover the ground okay now i'm going to give y'all the solution i gave y'all the problem i'm giving y'all my reaction it's terrible that we have all these stars out okay it's ruining the sport of basketball now let me give you a solution adam silver needs to shorten the regular season because not only does it make more sense and make games more meaningful and trim some of the fat of an nba season right but it will put less stress on these players bodies making them more available does creating a product that people are more inclined to watch and that's my take for 99 cent so in regards to shortening the season that's something i've been harping on for a while i do agree it would definitely make games more meaningful i think that's one advantage that the nfl just naturally has over a lot of these other sports is the fact that they're only 17 games right so the value 
of each game is just more important. Like one loss or one win in the NFL is a lot more valuable than one win or one loss in the NBA or Major League Baseball or any other sport, just because in those other sports, you have a lot more options. And I just think as good as that would be, it's just not happening because of the owners. Like if you eliminate regular season games, the owners are gonna be losing money, which is not something that they're gonna be signing up for. Now, I do have one idea that I'd like to throw at you, and I wonder how you'd feel about it, and and if you think this would maybe fix the problem, is what do you think about, like, moving the three-point line back? Like, I think that's something that should really be considered. I think there are a lot of problems within the NBA right now, uh, really dating back a couple years. The load management and the injuries have a lot to do with it because, also, there's no direct concrete evidence that load management and sitting your stars and not prioritizing the regular season is something that ultimately helps you in the playoffs. Like, look at the Clippers last year. I thought the fact that Kawhi Leonard was healthy for the majority of the regular season and they were playing good basketball, if Kawhi stays healthy, I I think the Clippers last year could have made a deep run. But the fact is he got hurt. They decided not to bring him back until right before the playoffs. And it was clear that him being out there just completely ruined any rhythm or any chemistry they had because he'd been out for so long. Like, if you keep your stars out, there's no evidence that helps you win in the playoffs. The Brooklyn Nets, uh, when they had Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, are another good example of that. And as much as I think helping or shortening the regular season would help these issues, A, the fact that we even have to consider it, it's a bad look for the league because it's clear just how diluted and just how much no one really cares or prioritizes the regular season. And the owners just aren't going to do it. And also, man, like, I don't know how you feel about this, but that this NBA in-season tournament, it's just very hard for me to take it seriously. The fact that these announcers are trying to amp it up like it's some big game and that the NBA Cup means something and you get to raise a banner like it's no it's it, these courts like make the game look silly like I'm just not about it I, I, the fact that they even had to do it it's just a bad look for the league and these games it's just a farce these games do not mean anything more than just your normal regular season game but it's just propaganda that oh the NBA Cup it, it means something you know these players are so excited they're so into the game like no but it's a regular season game Tr- stop trying to make it anything more important than that yeah, salute to my guy Kenny. And you know, I'm not sure Kenny was there for the beginning of my take, but the premise of my take, and Zach, I'm gonna answer your question, your proposal, by the way, is that Steph Curry, although one of the all-time greats, he gave us a highlight reel last night with his three-point shot. He has ruined the game of basketball. Guys are taking a lot of threes now, and the reason why we see all these injuries that we are seeing, and I name all the guys that we are seeing that's gonna be out for multiple weeks or mo- multiple months. Is because they have to cover a lot of ground when it comes to defending the three-point shot. They have to defend the paint. Guys are dishing the ball back out. You got to cover that ground. And there's a lot of wear and tear. And the schedule is too long. You combine those two things, it, it, it's an issue. And I think for me, going to your proposal, Zach, about moving the three-point line back, I don't think it, it, it fixes a lot. Guys are going to take three-point shots. It's a new modern game. Steph Curry played a role in that. You're still going to have Victor Remyama, seven foot, out here taking threes. You're still going to have Carl Anthony Towns, seven foot, out here taking threes. It's not going to change that. They're going to take threes from the logo. Okay, it's not going to change that. What's going to change is the fact that the schedule is too long. You're talking about owners losing money. The ratings are down. Okay, the ratings are down. they losing money anyway. What they need to do is shorten the regular season, start the game, They really should start the NBA season on Christmas Day. That's what they should do. Move away from the NFL. The NFL is the kingpin. You don't want to compete with the NFL. That's another reason why you're losing money. Because the NFL have all these games on Monday, Thursday. You're losing money, bro. Okay? Let the NFL do its thing. Start the season on Christmas. And then go from that calendar. So from January to whenever the match is up. And you shorten the season. By about 12 games, maybe. Maybe 12 to 14 games. Just cut some of the fat off. It's not going to make and break your paychecks. You're losing money already. And then you save the NBA. You make the games more meaningful. Guys are not going to get hurt as much because the season is shorter. Back-to-backs is going to be more important. And that's how you fix the league. Or try to. Yeah, and I wonder if fixing any of those things would you know really be a real solution like yeah maybe even a four point line i don't think that would necessarily uh, hurt things right now but 
I just feel like that, like the regular season, we have to prioritize and, and make it mean more. And maybe shorting the regular season would help fix that issue. But again, like they're losing enough money. I, I, and the other thing too, if you start the season on Christmas, I like that. But the, then you get into this whole debate with the players association because we know how much these NBA players love their summer. And I've like I remember um, when the pandemic was going on and the bubble happened and that really like messed up the regular NBA calendar. And I was like, man, like it's awesome being here in July and in uh, August and having meaningful NBA games on. Like that was awesome. But then the players were like, no, it's our summer. Like we we don't want that to be taken away from us. So I always thought like starting the regular season on Christmas would be a good idea. But I just don't know if the players would agree to it. So Man, these you- players, they make millions of dollars a year. All their contracts are guaranteed. I don't want to hear about, oh, I don't have a summer. Play basketball, bro. But what are the millions for? <laughs> it's the hoop. Go hoop. You know? I agree, man. And, and, agree. and LeBron James is out here, what, 40-something years old, the oldest player in the NBA, possibly. And he's out here talking about, I want to play back-to-backs this year. Not only back to backs, he said you want to play all eighty-two games this year. Like it's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, there's there's no doubt about that. And uh, man, I'm just Adam Silver. There's gonna be a lot of eyeballs on him because I think people are finally starting to realize like he hasn't really done that great of a job since uh, taking over D- for David Stern. And what is he gonna do to at least try to dig the NBA out of this hole? I agree. And I think all well, listen, the NBA got work to do, Kenny. It's a lot, but go ahead, Zach. The mic is yours. Okay, Lil. So a couple of weeks back, we uh, were joined by NFL Mike, and we did our uh, world famous NFL hot seat segment. And uh, I have a take on the coaching carousel that I'd like to give off uh, for my take for ninety nine, and that's the fact that I think in this hiring cycle, we already know, like we already have a good idea of some teams this off season that are going to be looking for a new head coach. Right, the Jets are one, the Saints are one. I'm sure the Jaguars are going to be in that category. Uh, the Raiders should be in that category. Um, the Bears, obviously, like there are going to be a ton of teams. I, I, I just listed five. There could be more. And I was just thinking about some of the candidates. And I'm going to say this right now. I think there is going to be at least one and maybe even two or three college coaches, guys that are coaching college football right now that are going to make the leap into the NFL and become NFL head coaches in this cycle. And Obviously, Deion Sanders is the one name a lot of people are pointing at. I don't think that's going to happen, at least yet. I think maybe he could be an NFL head coach one day. Uh, He's done a great job at Colorado. All of a sudden, they are in the Big 12 race. They have a good chance to make the college football playoff. But Deion's only been coaching for a few years. I don't think he's going to be coaching in the NFL, at least in this cycle. But I have two other names that I really wanted to focus on. And also, I should preface this. like We know how many big-name college coaches in both basketball and football have decided to either retire or move on in recent memory because of the NIL. Like these student athletes are getting paid. They're making money, which is great. But a lot of coaches don't love dealing with that. They don't like negotiating with agents. They don't like, uh, you know, dealing with players demands when it comes to money. They just want to coach football or coach basketball. That's what they want to do. So I never... I never say it's impossible for any coach to to jump out of college. We saw it with Nick Saban. We saw it with Mike Krzyzewski. We saw it with uh, Roy Williams, Jim Boeheim, uh, a lot of guys in both college football and college basketball. Jim Harbaugh, that was the one I was looking for. He decided to move to the NFL this year. Uh, So the two guys I'm looking at are Kirby Smart from Georgia and Dan Lanning from Oregon. I think one of those two guys are going to become an NFL head coach this offseason. And the one guy I'm really looking at is Kirby Smart. We know that Georgia has won two national titles recently in uh, 2022 and 2023. Uh, They missed the playoff last year, and they were supposed to get back this year. And to be honest, it's no guarantee. They just lost a game to Ole Miss uh, that they had no business losing, really. They have the more talented team. They didn't really show up for that game. And I just wonder, would Kirby Smart, a guy that I think right now is considered the best coach in college football. Would this be a challenge he's willing to take? I don't even know what team he would go to. Uh, You know, he's from Georgia. Maybe he has interest in going to the Jaguars, coaching Trevor Lawrence. We know how good of a college quarterback he was. He coached against him in college. And um, I I just never doubt these college guys, if they get the opportunity to jump to the NFL, I think they could take it. And this Georgia team, I don't think they're going to make the playoff this year. And if they don't, um, would that be something he entertains? They've also had a lot of off the field issues. I just don't really know if the culture Kirby Smart at Georgia is sustainable enough. And I think coaching pros 
that would be a challenge he'd be willing to take. So that's my take for 99. Just keep an eye out for some college football coaches jumping at the opportunity to go into the NFL this cycle because I think they're going to be a lot of jobs opening up. Yeah, I think that's a, a question, not a question, but a take that you can look at and have different angles and to try to narrow the gap here. Um, when you look at college coaching, right? Coaching in college, being a head coach in college, it's always something that I always used to be like, why would you ever leave that job? Like it's more guaranteed than the NFL, the NBA, right? Because especially if you're a good coach like Kirby Smart or Dabo Sweeney, one of those elite coaches that have been doing this for a long time, even my guy from Oklahoma State, um, I forgot on a while. Uh, Mike Gundy. Mike, Mike Gundy. Gundy. Mike Gundy, right? We Who has interviewed for NFL jobs before, by the way? Yeah, he has, but he never left. He never left Oklahoma State. I'm not sure if he ever got the job. But um, you got all those coaches that um, you, you get them an opportunity to interview for a job and and they don't leave and the reason why they don't leave is because they have um stability you know um college sports it gives you that and um i think when you talk about the nil and how that makes things a little bit more uncertain why guys like um nick saban from alabama retired is because like you said they don't want to negotiate with agents it makes the game a little bit harder now not only when you get a guy you got to keep the guy the guy might get another bag your recruit to go somewhere else right i think kirby smart is the best coach in college football so why not you know why not and i think that in the league in the nfl from the nfl perspective you have teams that are trying to hire more young innovative minds more guys that may have played the game before that's a new avenue we are leaving the nick sabins excuse me we are leaving the bill belichick's even though bill belichick may still have a job we are leaving Pete Carroll we're leaving those old heads and we want new brains we want uh you know guys that can innovate the game and guys that can relate to people in the locker room so I think those two when you combine it is why you may have a coach or two potentially coming into the NFL to coach and even look at uh some offensive coordinators right like uh Todd Munkin he came from Georgia that's turned out to be a pretty good hire by the Ravens you look at a guy like Liam Cohen uh he had some NFL experience as Mike McDonald yeah, all of those guys. Jesse Minter, like there are a, a ton of guys that have come from the college game and have had some success in the NFL. I think it's going to continue, and I think that is something a lot of teams and a lot of owners are uh, taking note of. But it's been a minute since we had a head coach. Well, we had uh, Jim Harbaugh, college. right? Well, Jim Harbaugh been in the NFL for a long time. <laughs> I'm talking about like recently, you know, uh, a, a coach coming from college being successful in the NFL. Yeah, and I minute. think. I think Kirby Smart did work for the Dolphins uh, with Nick Saban. I will look that up right now. I'm pretty sure he did, but I think he would be an intriguing hire. This guy's won two national championships at Georgia. He actually played in the NFL too. Yes. So Kirby Smart was the safeties coach of the Dolphins for one year in 2006. Only NFL experience he has, but uh, at least he has some, and he's obviously been around the game for a while. Because you got um, the previous examples, Cliff Kingsbury. You know, was a head coach. It didn't work out. Now he found a home as a coordinator, more suited for him. Right now, you had um, Matt Rule in Carolina. Didn't work out. You had Urban Meyer, of course. Didn't work out in Jacksonville. So we'll see if the NFL continues to to go down that path. No doubt.